a very warm welcome back to Rasvet for episode 10 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's a glorious morning here in Rasvet. I'm up at the store. I bought the wheel loader up. I'm leasing a slightly larger bucket. Uh, today we are working on infrastructure. I have got some farming stuff to do and in the process of doing, I took on a contract for... Now, Field 5, somebody noticed in the last episode, there was a contract on Field 5, which is the biggest field on the map, for 230,000. And it was putting, it was uh, planting potatoes. I didn't do it. I, I, I honestly did think about it. I didn't do it. But the weird thing is... I slept overnight. When I woke up this morning, field five has been planted, but not with potatoes. I'm slightly baffled by that. So I thought, when the fertilising contract came up, let's jump all over that, because that pays out 57,000. Even if I have to refill the fertiliser a couple of times, I'm still going to make that money back. So that's ongoing when that's done i'm then going to move the tractor back to the farm and grab the cultivator i need to cultivate our field six that we harvested in the last episode so infrastructure we are working for the building site today the money has gone down to thirty-one thousand. is dropping obviously it's got a worker going we have bought the plot of land with the sand pit i know it's not a sand pit but you know who doesn't like playing in a sand pit who didn't like building sand castles on the beach when they were kids that kind of thing uh, but I thought the bucket we had was a little bit small for this wheel loader. Now this wheel loader itself may be a little bit too small. I have taken over the Ural and I'm going to load that. I am... I'm unsure. I mean, it's not a huge capacity load on it. Actually, that doesn't too bad. One of the other buckets I leased was ridiculously large. Now, sand is heavy. I don't know whether it's got a full load, whether it's going to be too heavy and this thing's going to tip up. I suppose potentially I might need a weight at that point. I don't know if there's one for this, actually. But we're going to get this over now. We're going to go kind of cross-country. I want to do the shortest route to and from. And as I mentioned before, the construction side not only does it need sand, it needs lumber. I'm not going to be doing the lumber in this episode. When I do the lumber, I'm going to be clearing trees around the area that we own. Or we have access to. So we're going to be on that. Uh, I need to fold that up. Start this up. Now, I could have just driven the wheel loader over. But to my mind as well, it's handy having the lorry with me. Because if for any reason... Wow, light changed. If I decide to go with a different trailer, or maybe a semi-trailer for hauling the sand, I've got it up here with me. I haven't got to go backwards and forwards. Now, as far as woods goes, thank you for the people that had vehicles available. I'm going to be doing, again, not in this episode, but when we get on to doing the lumber side of things, I'm going to be swapping out my Ural for a Ural that Christoph has. Now, Christoph has been clearing some land, has got a logging Ural with um, a logging trailer, and is quite happy to do a straight swap he's ready to move on to his farming phase and would like a ural with a bed but with a with a, uh, a back section so you know do a swap i will organize that with christoph near the time but thank you to the people that did respond to say they did have vehicles available there were a few offers and i've gone with christoph that's no slight on anybody else just had to go with someone so like I say, we're going to go across country. I'm not looking at... There are two places I can sell sand, but we are selling at the construction site, or taking it to the construction site. They're going to pay us for it. I believe they've already begun construction, or at least they're digging footings and that kind of thing over there. So we'll be providing this. And then when they're onto the building phase, then the lumber side of things will become a bit more important, I suppose. I need to find a route through... Yeah, well, like I say, we are fertilising and I'm going to be cultivating. The farming side of things is still continuing. But this, like any farm area where you've got... What's the best way of putting it? Additional options. Diversification in your farming. 
it's always nice to show it off to you know to see what's available on any given map in any given area and the sand situation is something a bit different now i could use i think i could use a conveyor belt uh, there's a couple knocking about that we'll pick up from the ground. I'm just going to use the loader. I think this is a the Magsy standard bucket is a 3,000 litre, I think. I did look at, there were a couple of, well, there were modded ones, but in the CSZ pack there was a 4,000 and a 5,000. The 5,000 just looked absolutely massive, so I, I, I really thought the 5,000 would just be too much. With that fully loaded, I don't think this wheel loader would cope with it. I don't know if it will cope with 3,000, but we shall see. This is being recorded on Monday the... I've lost... I've completed track of dates. The 5th, Monday the 5th of April. It's my lovely wife's birthday, Mrs. Simpy, on the 7th in two days' time. I had a lovely Easter Sunday with my eldest daughter who moved out recently with her boyfriend. She invited us over and she did a Sunday roast. It was amazing. You've probably heard me mention as well before I follow a channel called Flank Farms. And I have said, you know, if you fancy looking for another channel to watch, they're great to watch. The lovely Sarah Den that runs the farm. Her son Rufus, that with a few of his friends and colleagues, they film events on the farm. Ah, logs. This is what I was talking about. I'm going to have to come and collect some of these. Oh, please tell me what's stuck on that. Stuck on a tree stump? Oh, no, just a bump in the ground. Uh, yeah. Where am I going? I'm lost. Oh, to the right. I can see the lake over there. Uh, yeah. So I follow Flank Palms and um, Sarah Denner, Son Rufus and all the people that work on the farm, that kind of stuff. And I was contacted by Rufus recently by email to say that his mum had said, basically come to him and said, we need to sell a cow or can, can you sell a cow? So he emailed 30 people on their subscriber list and I was one of them. I was lucky enough to subscribe. So I was just chosen. Would I be interested in buying a beef box from the farm so their um, butcher would sort out the meat they box it all up and you buy a, a box of meat so I said absolutely I would you know that's just you know it's a great way to support the farm I get something kind of in return as well it was a really really cool thing to do uh, so that kind of went ahead and they delivered the beef boxes now their farm actually isn't that far away from where I live it's a bit of a drive so on the day they delivered the meat I got a text saying they were on their way, um, the meat would be delivered, they were a little bit delayed um, and then when they finally arrived I went out the front, there was a Toyota to pick up out the front, fantastic and, and it was covered in mud. Now I thought a courier would be bringing the stuff out, so I thought that's weird, I wonder if they've come from the farm, you know, whether, you know. And Sarah herself, the lady who runs the farm, the farmer, came around the back of the pickup, delivered it personally. I was blown away. Now at that again, that sounds weird. That situation where the, where people kind of idolise is the wrong word, but you know what I mean about YouTubers you follow and you you know a lot about them because of their channel and what they do and who they are and you feel like you know them already when of course you've never actually met them, you know. And you kind of I suppose that you kind of idolise them in a way or you know you just like them as a person and what they stand for and that kind of thing. So to meet her in person, I was really starstruck. I was like, it was amazing, absolutely cool. So anyway, I'm digressing from you know, what I was talking about. So part of that beef box was, um, there were three beef joints in there, two of which I gave to my daughter. So my eldest daughter, when she did a roast for us for Easter Sunday, um, did two of these beef joints. Oh man, just wow. I had one of the, um, also part of the beef box was, it was a beef beef before the rib. I thought it was a ribeye initially, and it was about an inch and a half, if not two inches thick, which is unbelievable. It looked like a ribeye cut. 
some of the best meat I've ever eaten, without any shadow of a doubt. I, I love a steak, and you know, but wow, well, we've got loads of stuff in this in this box. So yeah, just a, just you know, we're just chatting like we do. You know, what have I been up to? What's been going on? I hope you had a lovely Easter, um, whether you're religious or not, whether you celebrate or not, whether you got to spend time with your families or not. Um, I hope you did something nice. I hope you ate great stuff and, you know, had a nice time. I know not everyone would have been able to, depending on your jobs and work and situations with regard to lockdown to where you are and that kind of thing. But anyway, we are up here at the sand pit. It's time to play. Let's build sand castles. Now, this, is, this also is a finite resource. Um, when this is gone, it's gone. Don't know how much we're going to get off of it. What I am going to do though is let's shovel the first load and see. Oh, that is heavy. <laughs> uh, okay, 3,000 litres? Nope. Wow. Blimey, that is crazy heavy. Um, rethink. I wonder if they've got if there's a wheel loader or something that I can lease or maybe the construction site's got one <laughs> I mean I'll lease it off of them I really thought it was going to work okay maybe not right construction site so let's see if they've got one we can lease off of them they must have something um, plan B yeah I know a few people had messaged and said you know and my, my RASVET advisory service had also messaged to say, you know, it is heavy and whatever you're going to use for getting it out, you may struggle. I really didn't anticipate that. Okay. Um, I'll drive this back out. And uh, I'll see you in a bit. Fingers crossed. Hmm, okay. <laughs> in a bit. Wow. They have one. I've paid up front. It wasn't cheap. But you know what? Sometimes you've got to spend some money to make some money. I don't know whether to drive it directly there or put it on the low loader. I might just drive it straight there. It might be easier, might it? Looks like they are busy. Foundations are beginning, that's good. Uh, what I will do, I think, is we'll just swap the bucket over. That'd be easy, wouldn't it? We just put the bucket on the one we're leasing. They've got a dump truck as well. So, Magirus, Magirus Deutz, Magirus. Never quite sure how to say these things. The Lizard 232. I think it's 232, wasn't it? Yeah. That's one side. What we'll do is we'll take the wheel loader. We'll do a load. Because I'm pretty sure that's quite cool, isn't it? So I wonder. That's got snorkels on it. Will that actually wade in deeper water? Or will it just. That no, probably won't. This isn't Snow Runner, is it? <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so. Right. That's a nice machine. Let's hop in that. Grab the bucket. Could I get away with a bigger, a bigger, a bigger bucket? A bigger bucket, maybe, but then looking at the weight, I don't want to take the chance. Oh, this drives at 31 miles an hour. Oh, we'll take, we'll just take this. Let's take the bucket. Let's get loading. And then what we'll do, we'll bring a load over. We'll see how the Ural gets on. If not, I suppose we could tip into that. It might be worth a look, mine. It's something a bit different to try out. 31. Never really looked at the speed of these things. It's only a bit bigger than what we've got. Okay. Let's get back over there. We're almost done on our 
fertilising contract, that one for 57 grand. The beauty of hired workers. I think that's something I'm going to miss on um, Lucas Island, which I'm currently also running, if you haven't watched any of that yet. I think I've done two episodes. Yeah. Third episode will be coming soon. On that one, I'm not doing contracts. I'm not having hired workers at all. So I'm going to make the most of it on here. <laughs> the hired workers at least. I, don't matter. I mean, I'm, I'm doing contracts anyway. But it is quite a different ball game. So I'm assuming this is still going to struggle with the weight, but just hopefully nowhere near as bad. I probably could have just got a big old weight on the back of the other one. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, shall we? It definitely looks a more sensible size on here, doesn't it? Oh yeah, <laughs> not even flinching. Oh, that's good. I have been told how much this, what this holds, this sand pit. I can't remember off the top of my head. Somebody did let me know and honestly, I've just completely blanked. It's a fair amount. Obviously it depends what you're going to get paid for it, what they're offering at the moment, but whatever we get is over and above, because like I said, at the moment we're kind of technically leasing the land. We've got a permit to use it. Once we've used all the sand, you'll just sell the land back, so this is all extra money. Like I said, it's interesting doing something different. You know, selling sand. It enables this kind of idea of, you know, yes, I know it's not construction simulator, I know it's not logging simulator, I know it's farming simulator, but it just adds another element. And it can be done, as we can see. Well, that's the point. That's what I'm going to do. I sell three. Right, this is only a seven. What, I keep saying seventeen thousand. It's seventeen six or something, isn't it? The trailer or the back part of the dural. I'm sure it's something like that. Right. Yeah, it's going to take a little while. I could, I could do it with larger buckets. I could do it with modded buckets. I could do it with conveyor belts. I could do it with all sorts of stuff. But I've never been, I've never been shy of in time in it. That doesn't bother me. I often find great I often find it a great stress reliever doing what would be considered I suppose monotonous and boring jobs. It doesn't bother me a lot of the times doing multiple trips or loads of small, you know, you've seen when I was doing the grass cutting, you know, all small machinery. It took me hours and hours but it didn't matter. You know, it took me longer than I thought it was going to but it was still relaxing and I enjoy doing it. I think because of the fact that I still hugely enjoy just playing the game, you know. I don't get a lot of spare time to just play the game for me, so to speak. You know, I know I'm doing it when I'm doing my videos, but you know what I mean. Um, I still really, really enjoy the gameplay. I still enjoy the vehicles, the new modded vehicles. I love the I love it, you know, and I've, I've said it so many times before, just taking that time to stop and, and look at what it is you're doing and, and in detail of the machinery and the processes and what it is we have available. You know, I never would have thought when FS19 released or even FF, 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 FS17 on console, especially being at a point where you could be loading sand, you know. That was there was a mod you could do that for on PC. You know there was the mining mod, and there was all these different ones you could do with maps that were specifically made for it. This is brilliant. Right, we are there. How heavy is this going to be, and how difficult is it going to be to get out? I think I'm going to use the Deutz as well. I might just ask if I can do at least one load with it. 
think that's a 20,000 litre capacity. Barely even touched the sides here. Let's see if this struggles. 17.6. Not going to go a bit cross country. It might be alright. Oh, it feels heavy. I know that sounds weird, but the physics of this... We're struggling to pick up momentum. Well, we'll see what we get for a full load. I'm either going to be, as often with these things, I'm either going to be really pleasantly surprised or quite disappointed to hope it's going to be more than I thought. But, like I said, it's it's in essence, it's free money. Yes, I'm having to put in the work of coming to collect it. Oh, yeah, that is struggling. Wow. And yes, I've already paid out eight grand leasing the the wheel loader. Okay. Blimey, that is heavy. Right, I need to go kind of cross country now. Please work. Please work. Okay. I hope I don't roll this over. So the first load will give us a gauge. This is not a bad route in and out. I'm a bit worried about those like muddy areas. As long as I don't just stop, we should be right. Help Chase complete dead task. Did it come up contract complete? I don't recall. I'll check that in a minute. Okay, we're here. Contract on field. Five is complete, although I haven't collected. I think there's another one available on 15, so I'm going to take it. Get the local workers cracking on. I think I need to sell it up here. Unload it, sell it, same thing. Yeah, just here. What are we going to get for a full load? Whoa, that went way past. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Fingers crossed this pace really well. Ten grand for one load. Take that. That's good. Right, what I'll do then, let's see if we can use their uh, their dumper. That's definitely I'll say it's definitely. It's definitely probably twenty thousand litres. It's good. A few loads like that. Let's pull over. I suppose we could hook trailers as well, maybe. Actually, I wonder if I could just tip it. No, actually, we'll leave it where they want it. Then they can do whatever they want from there. Right, let's check this out. It's the right look and feel for what we're doing, I think, as well. Now, it's German, I believe. Nice looking bit of kit, right. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to do. Hang on. Let's get off the main road first. Getting too easily distracted. Uh, right, contract complete. Field, 50, field 57. Field 5, 57 grand. Yeah, field 15. Needs fertilising 32 grand. Yeah. I'll take that. Excellent. Don't know how many loads to do actually. I'll do a few. We'll do at least we'll do one full one with this. See how this gets on with the full load. I might swap back to the Ural. Nice bit of suspension movement on this as well. I like that. Come on, come on, 
Cool. All part of my ongoing collaboration with Wayland Rutani, as well as the precision farming aspects, helping to build infrastructure. It's kind of the deal. Sponsorship agreement, I guess. Okay. weird isn't it how certain vehicles you get in and they seem big until you come up against something that's bigger obviously that's how it works but <laughs> that dump truck looks really small all of a sudden but driving out it didn't it's taken the sand that's good I'll probably do parking this in a different place. Just for ease of loading, really. Oh, no drum. I'm not going completely round each time. Sand pit farm. what you did when there was a sand pit with your Tonka trucks and stuff like that hours and hours moving stuff about I tell you what I got recently it was one of those kind of things I've been kind of putting off for a while and I'm denied I'm denied oh I'm gonna get one because I collect well uh, normally 1 to 32 scale tractors if you watch my uh, 50k subscriber special uh, when I showed the man cave and all my models and all that kind of stuff, that's the, I collect those. They do uh, the CQ RC um, radio controlled versions, and I got a 1 to 32 scale Fent radio controlled with front loader, and then I got a trailer for it as well, which all tips on RC control. Oh man, I love it! And it's like this it takes you back to being a kid again. <laughs> It's got working lights, it's got beacons, oh it's brilliant, I absolutely love it. I know it's ridiculous, I'm a grown man, blah blah blah, but, again, I've said so many times before, never stop being a child, it's great. Right, got to be almost there, haven't we? So I'll get field 15 underway. When that's done, we'll go over and get the cultivating done. Oh, that's a point. I didn't check on the bunker side. I'm assuming the bunker silo is done fermenting. We need to do some loads of silage to the biogas plant as well. Maybe I can keep hold of this. Oh, I probably could do actually using a conveyor belt for that, I think, maybe. I think doing it by bucket 
3,000 litres at a time might take a while. Mind you, this is going to as well, isn't it, I suppose? So we've got some big old piles here, haven't we? I don't know whether I... Do I need to get a larger vehicle? Just wondering if it's worth... Maybe get a semi trailer. Should I try low with a semi trailer as well? <laughs> we could do, couldn't we? At least we've then given everything a go, haven't we? Well, not everything, but you know what I mean. I just love the look of this. This comes in a few different configurations as well. Yep, 20,000 litres. Yep, that feels heavy too. Second full load with the Deutz, and I'm going to try a semi load. I don't know if that'll be too heavy. I've said that for each of these, it's actually worked out right, but we'll try. Why are we not getting the thing coming up? There we go. This actually pulls really well. I like it. So we'll leave this here at the yard. Like I say, I don't know whether or not just to keep hauling today, I wasn't going to. And then... I don't know, do I keep hauling? Or do I just do a little bit every now and again? Doing a little bit every now and again means having a wheel loader on hand up there all the time. And I can't, I mean the one we've got at the moment is leased and it's expensive. I don't really want to be leasing one. Or maybe we need to upgrade our wheel loader I guess. If, if we do alright selling stuff here, maybe upgrading the wheel loader will work. That's cool. Right, let's grab a semi. We'll go and grab a trailer from the store. See what they have available. There must be something we can use. I know there's definitely a couple of dump trailers knocking around. There's another one I was going to have a look at. Just gives me an option. And, and also, chance to try out a few different ones I haven't really used before. I think the one I was looking at is about 48,000 litre. 48,000 litres of sand might just be too much but again like I say this could haul it no problem at all in which case fantastic. 
Let's swing around that way. So we do have these two available, which I've mentioned before, but there is this I thought kind of might fit the 9509 48,000 litres. It says it will do sand. Not too expensive to lease. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Uh, hmm, might be a little bit tricky. <laughs> I've never been great at using the mirrors. It's the same drive over. Is this, is this a third axle that drops? Doesn't look like it. Oh, okay. You know what, I think the, the best way to leave the sand pit open for access whenever I need to come back to it is going to be um, a, a conveyor belt that I can pick up from the ground. That just makes far more sense. I can get one, I'll bring one out. That way I don't need a wheel loader here all the time. I can just come back whenever I need to. Once the sand is all used up, uh, then the conveyor belt goes back. It's going to be a lot cheaper to buy one than a wheel loader. And I will buy one rather than lease one. I can use it for silage pits and stuff as well if I want to. And this obviously at 3,000 litres at a time to fill a 48,000 litre trailer is going to take a little bit longer than the other ones have done. I must admit, I thought the payments would be a lot higher for sand. Contract is almost done. That's great. Um, let's go across. What is it saying sand is paying out? Oh, construction site is 550 and falling. And the buying sand is 725. I wonder then. Should I take a load there? I mean, it doesn't help the guys at the construction site. We have done a couple of loads already, to be fair, haven't we? Well, three loads. Two with the Deutz and one with the Ural. I think we've probably met our obligation for the day, do you reckon? Do you reckon I'll get away with that? Or is uh, Wayland going to turn up with something really nasty? Something that could burst out of my chest. It caused me grief. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I think we'll take the next load. Yeah, we'll take it to the other one. I know I said it didn't matter. And we have already done some loads to the construction site. So I say that's what I was supposed to be doing. And I've done that. That's not picking that one up. Come on. Well, that reminds me as well. William wanted some sand, didn't he? He asked me a while back. How much did he want? I wrote it... <laughs> it was one of the few times I did write things down. I wrote it down on a piece of paper. <clears throat> Can you think where I might have put that piece of paper? William has been an incredibly good friend to the family. Has helped me out with Helmerkra and all different contracts. Oh, we've got a full 3,000 litres. That's done before. With various different ideas and when he runs his farms, he kind of often sends me kind of like subscriber contracts, I guess. He asks me if I can do certain things and when I have done, he's then sent me payments. And, you know, we've done it a little bit here and there. 
I'm sure he asked me for sand. I'll just check my filofax. <laughs> I suppose there's most youngsters out there would never clue what a filofax is. I must have got notes somewhere. Lost them. Lost my notes. Like my mind. My marbles. Right, I'm going to carry on loading this. While I'm loading this, I'm going to try and find that information. It's got to be here somewhere. Wait a minute, why wouldn't it pick that little bit up there on the floor? It doesn't seem to want to do that bit. Oh well. Because to be fair, if I can find the information, this load going to the other cell point could be, because that's up by the railroad, that could be part of what he needs maybe. Hmm. Contract on field 15 is complete. That's good news. Let's scroll across to that. That's another 32 grand in the coffers. You know what we'll do while we're doing it? Let's pay another 10 grand off the loan. That's the an original trailer paid for. Should I do 10 or 20? Oh, you know what? I'm going to do 20. So we've paid 10 grand off for the trailer we bought off the farmer originally. And 10 grand off what we owe to the government. Still looking all right. Now I need to get that back to the farm. Check on the bunker silo. Silage clamp for fermenting. It should be fermented by now. Grab the cultivator, get over to field six and get that cultivating. So that'll be two fertilising contracts and a field cultivated as well as playing in the sand. I'm continuing to load up the uh, semi-trailer but I need to bring this back Grab the cultivator, check on the, the silage clamp on the way past. I found the information I was looking for. Uh, it's Willie's Logging, Switzerland. And he wanted two loads of sand for making sandbags. That was what it was for. So, uh, it's on its way. We are sorting it. The first of two 48,000 litre loads will be winging their way to you. What's going to happen is I'm going to ship it, I will get paid, and then if you pay them, I think that's how it's going to work. I know uh, William offered me something else in return, but I don't think that's going to work out where we are. So, yes, it is done fermenting. Brilliant. That's good. So, yeah, the um, conveyor that I'm looking at, the pickup conveyor, is the uh, Grimmer SL8022 Quantum ALX by Top Ace 888. It's available with a root crop storage um, setup. I've used it before. Um, it's about 38 grand, maybe 40 grand. If I go for the larger capacity, I think it's got a 12,000 litre belt. That still could be cheaper than buying a brand new, bigger wheel loader for doing all the stuff up at the quarry. Plus, when I'm done, I mean, I could have been a wheel loader as well, but I can move it and use it elsewhere. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'll get the, uh, I can, I'll just bring it down here and use it actually at the um, silage clamp. So it will work perfectly down here. Which one of these did I put it? Oh, it's over in the big hanger, isn't it? The cultivator. So we get a load more of this done. Sand shipped. And then I think what we'll need to get onto then is whatever we decide to do with our field six. I said I was going to do a rectangular cultivation and we were going to do some test plots, weren't we, was the next phase. So I can make a bit of money from my silage that I've got in the bunker silo. I'm making a bit of money from the sand so I don't have to rely too heavily on 
crop work for bringing in money at the moment. So what I will do is use field 6 as a test plot for the precision farming or continuation of precision farming. Which is good, it's where I need to be at. It gives me a few more options because if I've got other, other, other revenue streams, as I've said before, by diversification. Unlike some farms where you are solely reliant on the farming, it is simply whatever crops you put in the ground, whatever you take out, that's where you're going to make your money from. This does actually give us a little bit more leeway. I like that. So what I'll do is, on the larger section of this field, six, like I said, I will do a rectangle. That way the strips will all be the same. Should all be the same. At least the same length. I know they're going to be cutting across different soil types, which is going to give me a little bit of a skewed result here and there. But what I'll do is I'll check the map and we'll... I'll try my best to plant things in a sensible way. I mean, if, if there is such a thing as a sensible way. And we can use this entire edge, that's not a problem. But actually, you know what? We need to work out how far up do we need to go. I reckon about here, I suppose. I don't want to catch the corner of the field at that end. So maybe about here. Right, if I get a worker to do it, it'll be a nice straight edge. No wobbling. Which is what I have a tendency to do. Because <laughs> our cedar uh, isn't a direct drill, so I need to cultivate anyway. Actually, it should give us, if I do strips up the field, I can get a few different crop types in, can't I? And show some different yields. And like I say, what I'll do is I'll run the lime spreader up in strips as well. So I, I kind of need three strips, really, don't I? I mean, I know I don't, I don't technically need to do liming this time round. Maybe I need to do one or two crops, but with all the different variables. So one left as it is, put it in the ground. One, go over the liming again. Another one, just fertiliser. And another one, lime and fertiliser, maybe. Hum-ha, hmm. hum-ha. Hum I should give that some thought. I know I said last time I was going to give it some thought, and I kind of am, but I'm also doing other things as well, so I'm trying to... Let's go back a little bit. Just trying to make sure I kind of cover all the bases. Right, there we go. I'm going to catch the corner on a... Should give me enough of a strip. Whether it's going to be enough... Or do I go lengthways? You know what, I need to go lengthways. If I go sideways across the field to do these as test plots or test strips, I don't think I've got enough of a run across the field to give me enough yield difference. The yield difference could end up being just a regular variable and I am really concerned about the what's under it the soil type is going to affect it quite a lot isn't it now what I'm going to do I want to use the maximum width of this field I'm going to put another strip down this way we'll get a rectangle don't worry it's just working out really the best way of doing it. Yeah. We'll be alright. Excellent. Right, I need to get back to the sand. The sand castles will not build themselves. I 
Okay, we've cleared out through the middle. Not all the way. 48,000 litres. The suspension seems to have just, like, bang. It's flattened out, I think. <laughs> it feels a little bit bumpy. I'm just hoping I don't get the landing gear stuck or anything. Move it, oh blimey. <laughs> Oh no! Wow, I need to get a serious run up on some of these slopes. Well, there's only that one coming out of here. Could be a problem. But you have to slow down for the bridge. Man. I, I love this. I, I love... The physics of this sand is crazy. But it really makes you have to think about what you're doing. This is going to stop, isn't it? I'm not going to get this up the hill. Come on, please don't hit zero. Keep going. Come on, don't start slipping. Don't start slipping. If we can get out of this bit, we're fine, I think. Oh, we've got those muddy areas further along. Keep going, please don't stop, please don't stop. No. With a couple of blips of zero, come on, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, come on. Okay, I need to find another route out. <laughs> Something without a hill. It is still going. Whoa. Whoa, okay. So this is going to be going to the delivery sell point, loading point for the railway. And this will be going off to Willie's Logging, Switzerland. I can't get any speed up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't stop, don't stop. drive through a tree, that's what everyone does. And then we get caught, oh, aren't we? And that's something else I'm enjoying, because it makes you really think. The other thing is the unexpected. You know, there's some degree of argument that, you know, when you're doing videos and stuff and people will come and say, oh, you know, you're a YouTuber, you're the person that claims to know all this. I've never claimed to know anything. <laughs> I've never claimed to be an expert of anything. When you play the game for a long time, you pick up tips and tricks and there's certain things that you've done over and over and over and you kind of take for granted and take as, as a kind of given. And I, I said that when FS19 came out and I was doing all the kind of guide videos, you know, does this work? How does this work? Does this still work in the same way we used to? Because you can't take anything for granted when a new version of the game comes out. What I like is when something like this happens and you can't take it for granted. You can't assume something will happen. I'm just going to try and avoid the mud if I can. I like that surprise of, you know, it'd be lovely to just get a lorry. 48,000 litres. I mean, I've hauled 48,000 litres and some on all sorts of maps with all sorts of crop types. It's never been a problem. But to get to that point where you're like, whoa, hang on a minute, I'm in real trouble here. My worker was the same. When I was going up that big hill up to where my, my kind of homestead was, a few times I had to stop and unload low loaders because I just it was just too heavy. You know, it would not get up the hill. And I like that. I like that surprise, you know. It makes you then think, okay, I, I need to really change this. What am I going to do, you know? Side of this. Please come on the other side of it. Yeah, that will do. That will do. I've been very keen to go through the middle of the mud every time because I love the dynamic of going through the mud, but this time, not so much.
Now I have managed to get out, but I am now thinking, do I want to switch back to the smaller lorries? Do more runs, but no, I'm not going to have any problems. Well, to be fair, I haven't, it's not like I've got stuck and I just can't move. I need to go... I don't know. I'm going to make a bad choice here, I know. I think it's the next turning on the right. Could have been that one, actually. But I didn't want to stop on that slope and then not be able to move again. Let's turn right down here. It's going to be a lot of sandbags, William. That sign not fall down. Right, check the map. Oh, that's fine there. That's doing its thing. Buying sand. Oh, I need to change direction. Let's go across one. Come on. So once I've uh, dumped this load, I'm going to buy the conveyor belt. So I won't get clobbered for any more leasing costs with the wheel loader as well. Uh, it's up here on the left, isn't it? Yep. Please be good. Please be good. Um, oh, the triggers on these are really, they're really playing with my emotions. <laughs> I thought, no, don't tell me I've got all this way with all of this, and then it won't unload. Not bad, not bad at all. Now we're going to see, is the price now plummeting? Nope, staying at 725 at the moment. So next load will definitely come here because that's going off to William. We have fulfilled our sponsorship agreement, at least for today, for Wayland Utani. We have got a couple of fertilizing contracts done. We have got some cultivating done. The bunker silo is done fermenting. I'm now going to go and sort out a conveyor belt. And I'll see you on the next one. I've got more sand to shift. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.